In the first two games of the series with the Mets, Giants pitching carried the day as rumors continued to swirl the teams in the market for a bat to bolster the offense. Did fans really start lining up at 7 a.m. for Tim Lincecum bobbleheads? Yeah. Second inning, Juan Uribe smokes a single to left. Buster Posey scores. 1-0 Giants. Next batter, Pablo Sandoval rips one up the middle. Pat Burl scores. Three-hit night for the Panda. Andres Torres, the table setter, clears the table with a three-run homer to break it wide open. Number eight for the Giants' leadoff man. 5-0 Giants. Third inning, Buster Posey adds to the lead. He shoots one the other way for his eighth homer of the season. It was another two-hit night for Posey. Matt Cain extended the scoreless streak to 24 innings, giving up a two-run homer to Ike Davis in the seventh. And despite the splash hit, Cain improves to seven and eight. The Giants beat the Mets 8-4 and go for the four-game sweep tomorrow. The Giants starting pitching has been lights out since the break. Lincecum, Zito, and Cain have given up just two runs in 24 innings. And more importantly, they've won all three games. Meanwhile, the A's are quietly one win away from getting back to 500 for the season. Good luck in keeping cool in Kansas City. The game temperature, 103 degrees. The A's bat started out hot. Kevin Kuzmanoff puts one in the gap for a two-run double. The A's score three in the first. Trevor Cahill had some early troubles of his own. Bases loaded in the second. Unieski Betancourt clears him with a grand slam. Cahill gives up five runs in the frame. But that was all Cahill would give up. In the seventh, Kuzmanoff strikes again. Derek Barton scores. Three RBI night for the Coos. Still tied in the ninth when Adam Rosales delivers the big hit, two out knock. And don't tell Kurt Suzuki catchers are supposed to be slow. Rounding third to beat the throw, the go-ahead run. A's beat the Heat and beat the Royals six to five. Today, towards the end of the game, I thought I wasn't going to make it. But, um, you know, it's just one of those things uh, you got to deal with, and you try not to think about it. You know, you come in the dugout, try to get cool, try to get hydrated, and, uh, you know, just really focus on baseball just because, you know, you, you start focusing about the heat, you start thinking about it more, and it's going to get worse. Louis Wusthazen doesn't seem to care how people pronounce his name. All he's thinking about right now is that it shows up on the Claret Jug tomorrow. What could he have been well, he thinking? Clang in the final pairing, Mark Kalkovecki blew up with a 77 now out of it. Paul Casey moves up the leaderboard on the front nine, five birdies, and everything rolling his way. His approach on the second stops just short of the hole. Casey ties the low round of the day with a great 67. Betrayed by the blade, Tiger Woods had all kinds of problems with green speed. His second straight 73, leaving him 12 strokes back. Shot of the day, Miguel Angel Jimenez off the wall, it carries perfectly onto the green, just like he blew it up onto the range. Conventional shot making for the leader, Louis Wusthazen. He drains this 55-foot birdie put on 16, adding another birdie on 18 to finish his round of 69 to get to 15 under. Wusthazen will enter the final round with a four-shot lead over Casey, and for the first time since 1969, there are no Americans in the top five of the Open Championship after three rounds. It's tough. I. I couldn't get anything started today. Um, boy, I hit the ball better today than I had the first two days, and I got nothing out of the round. Yesterday and today, uh, I felt like I three-putt every hole, so um, it was frustrating because uh, I'm hitting the ball well enough to contend in this tournament, and I'm just not there. Round two of the American Century Championship in Lake Tahoe. Charles Barkley officially hitting rock bottom with his golf swing. Training camp riding around the corner, and you know the Niners could use another receiver. Jerry Rice looks like he still could do it on Sundays on a level playing field, of course. And if the Raiders have a putting contest to pick up their starting quarterback, this summer it'll be Kyle Bowler winning the job with nice putts like this. Former QB Billy Joe Tolliver leads after two rounds. An English Premier League team visits San Jose for the first time in 13 years, and we hit the track for a little drag racing. The NHRA invades Infineon. More sports next. Right off the back of that race car. Wow. With the World Cup over, Bay Area soccer fans can now focus all their attention on the earthquakes, making a second half playoff push. Had, Apparently not all the Vuvuzelas were left in South Africa. Sellout crowd at Buckshaw Stadium, the Quakes taking on Tottenham of the English Premier League. Javier Robles misses high and wide on the free kick. The friendly ends in a scoreless tie. Qualifying day for the NHRA at Infineon. Funny car division and really nothing funny about this. Gary Densham's car catches fire, parts go flying everywhere. Densham would be okay and even managed to qualify second. 
Jack Beckman will be the top seed. They're back on the track tomorrow for final eliminations. Stage 13 of the Tour de France, Alexander Vinokurov didn't have much company on the sprint to the finish line. It's the fourth career stage win for the vet from Kazakhstan. No changes at the top. Andy Schleck keeps the yellow jersey. He leaves Alberto Contador by 31 seconds. And that's your day in sports, Ann. All right. Thanks very much, Dave. We'll be right back.